What's up, people? It's Dev Sage here in the flesh, not with the tutorial today. Uh, I bought a camera. I bought a camera because I wanted to start making some more personal type videos alongside my tutorials. But I mean, honestly, I'm not even really sure what kind of topics I want to talk about with these videos. Um, you know, on one hand, I consider talking about, you know, how to make more money as a web developer, how to leverage your skills as a developer, as an engineer to kind of generate different streams of passive income and even talk about, you know, freelancing and how to get yourself established doing that. Um, so that was kind of one thing I wanted to talk about. Another thing I consider was, you know, making videos on how to actually secure a job as a web developer, as a software engineer. Uh, you know, some tech channels, they, they talk about a little bit of everything. They talk about, you know, this, the new framework that's coming out or how to build a coffee maker as a software developer. And that's cool for them. But as for this channel at its current size, I don't think that the best strategy would be to talk about any and everything that comes to mind. I think that the best strategy for me would be to focus on maybe one, maybe two topics to talk about, uh, kind of take up that space, becoming an authority figure in a sense, and then move on to expand to different topics from there. That's just the strategy I think would be best for me. And don't worry, I'm still gonna be making tutorials. I'm just trying to figure out what kind of videos I wanna make alongside my tutorials. But in the meantime, until I figure that out, this video is gonna be about me. Who is Dev Sage? What, what is a Dev Sage? What is that? Who is this guy? Well, my name is Patrick, and I am a software engineer and a full stack web developer. Software engineer is my official job title. That's what I do for a living, but I've been doing web development ever since, I wanna say I was 15, 16, it was years ago. I think I first got started by, uh, I, think it was, I think one of my cousins had sent me a video and it was, uh, I think it was like what most schools don't teach. And it was just this basic, this short five minute uh, interview with these different people. Like I think Bill Gates was on there, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Chris Bosch, and just these different people that you recognize. And, and they talk about, you know, how they got into coding and how coding could be kind of intimidating at first. But once you get a grasp on it, it can kind of turn into your own little superpower. And 16 year old me thought that was pretty dope. I was like, OK, yeah, that's definitely something I want to do. How do I how do I get into this? Where do I sign up? And after a while, I stumbled upon Code Academy. Uh, some of us has probably used Code Academy before. Some of us probably still use Code Academy. Um, it's a great learning resource to get the foundations of coding, the foundations of, of web development and programming. And uh, that, that's how I started. I took the HTML and CSS course and I really liked it. Like, I really liked the idea that I could type something in a computer i could tell a computer what to do and it do it like i thought that was just the neatest thing in the world you know even if it was just html and css at the time you know i was i was like wow was this what the hackers do all day wow you know i thought i was doing something with my html and my css but yeah it really caught my attention and it really kind of pushed me to learn more about it so, you know, naturally, I'm, after I took the HTML, the CSS, I moved on to the JavaScript course. And, you know, I, I kept learning and learning, t kept taking different courses, you know, jQuery, uh, React, Angular, uh, Git. You know, I learned Bootstrap and stuff on the side. I was, I was really determined to learn this stuff. I really liked it. I, I was building my own side projects. And, you know, I, I knew I wasn't any good, but I knew that if I just kept building and building and just learning and learning that eventually I would get to a point where I could actually build something that's useful. So I kept learning and I learned and I learned and fast forward maybe a year or so. I'm in high school and I signed up for my first intro to programming class. It was like a, a Java one class. And that really kind of exposed me to this whole other side of coding and, and programming that wasn't web development. And it was like, wow, like it, it, it opened my eyes a little bit. 
so yeah, I took that class and, I, and that was the intro to Java one class. And the next year, I think that was my senior year in high school, I signed up for the intro to Java two class. And that really solidified things even further and, and played a big role in what my decision would be uh, as to what I wanted to study in college. So when it was time to make that decision of what I wanted to study in college, I had three things in my mind. One of the things was pre-law. Um, I always liked the idea of being a judge or a lawyer. Um, so that's that. Um, the other thing was computer science, of course. And number three was music. Side note, I can play a few instruments. So anyway, after some decision making, I decided to go with computer science. I thought that, you know, why not? I mean, one, I really liked coding already, so I, I felt like that would be something I would enjoy. And two, I was gonna open myself up to make a lot of money potentially. And I, I, I liked that idea. So I went off to college that fall as a comp sci major, and I do not regret it. College level computer science really has nothing to do with web development at all. I mean, there's, no, there's very little HTML or CSS outside of, you know, the, maybe the, your final project where you're actually building something for the real world. But the main course curriculum, it's, it's operating systems, databases, networks, algorithms, and mobile apps. I mean, the whole nine yards. I mean, it was really just this whole, it, it was built on creating software engineers. So that was good for me because I had already gotten this side of web development under my belt and I was still learning throughout college. You know, by that time I had learned Node, you know, Express, Mongo. So I was technically a full stack developer while I was in college. So I had that skill set. And now I was building this whole other skill set that was prepping me to become a, a software engineer. So I kind of had, you know, the best of both worlds. I was a mixed bag, a jack of all trades, so to speak. And I'm not gonna lie, it got kind of hard sometimes because you know, I was going to school and I had to focus on classes, but I also had to balance that with having two jobs. I, you know, I, one of my jobs was I was a cook at Sonic some nights, and then the other nights I was working at my school's library as a circulation desk um, assistant. So it was, it was, it was kind of hard sometimes. I really didn't have any time to do much of anything. But I mean, I had to do it because I'm pretty fond of eating. <laughs> the good thing was I didn't have to do that forever because lucky for me, my junior year, I actually interviewed for and landed a software engineering internship at a company in my area. So that was pretty exciting. One, because I didn't have to slave anymore in order to live and two, I could get some real world industry experience while I'm still in school. And I knew that if I did well enough work in the internship that that could lead to a full-time offer, which it did. So I started working my internship and the good thing about it was that it, it wasn't a seasonal internship. You know how you might go to an internship for three months or over the summer and then just come back and just continue like your regular life. With my internship, they actually worked around my class schedule. So I was able to actually work and go to school at the same time. So I was able to work my internship all the way through up until I finished school, like three weeks ago. And I'm actually a full-time software engineer there today. So yeah, that's kind of like a brief overview of how I got introduced to coding and how I grew as a developer over the years. So I guess now I could talk a little bit more about this channel, DevSage. So how did DevSage, the YouTube channel, come about? Uh, well, I guess I wanted to start making tutorials and I wanted to kind of grow my online presence a little bit. Um, you know, I, I would see guys like Traversy Media or Learn Code Academy, you know, with all these followers. And I was like, man, these guys are just making tutorials. I can do that. I can, I can make some tutorials. Uh, but you know, th at the time there were so many tutorials out there already, so many guys doing it. And I was like, well, how do I set myself apart? Like, how do I stand out? Well, it turns out the way to stand out is to be the most 
simple. What a concept, I know. The way to stand out the most is being the most simple. Yes, when it comes to making tutorials. If I clicked on a tutorial about X, by the end of that video, I should be able to complete this sentence. X is blank and it be grammatically correct. If I can't finish that sentence by the end of that tutorial, it's a bad tutorial. Throw the whole video away. It's not simple enough. It's not straightforward enough. You've talked all around the point, but you haven't told me what the point is directly. And so many people teach like this. They can know 10,000 things about the topic they're trying to teach, but because they're a bad teacher, a bad communicator, they can't relay information in an effective way, in a way that people can actually understand. And I've seen it so many times myself, like I'm largely self-taught when it comes to web development. So I used to watch a lot of tutorials online and you know, I might click on a tutorial one day and it could be 15, 20 minutes long. But by the end of the tutorial, I feel just as lost as I was before I clicked on it because I wasn't able to answer the question, what is blank? You know, so that idea is something I try to center my own tutorials around, you know, very simple, very straightforward. And if some of you who watch my tutorials probably notice that, you know, at towards the beginning of every tutorial that I do, I try to make it a point to say exactly what I'm describing is. I'll say, this is a tutorial about X. X is, this is what X is used for. This is why we use X and this is how we use it. Simple. So that's kind of the strategy that I adopted when it comes to setting my channel apart and making it unique. So that's a little bit about why I started this channel and kind of my motivations. I guess one more thing I can talk about is the name of the channel, DevSage. What does that mean? So Dev is short for developer, as some of you have probably guessed already. And Sage, well, like a Sage is like a, this, this very wise person, right? So, uh, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I'm just the, the wisest developer that's ever lived. That's, that's not what I'm trying to say. I just want this channel to be recognized as a place where people can come and learn and learn a lot. That's all. Um, so yeah, I talked a lot in this video, I feel about kind of who I am and how I got this channel going. I'm still looking for, you know, some topics that I could potentially talk about on this with my vlogs. Uh, so leave me some ideas in the comments. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe if you want more content. I got some more tutorials coming soon. Uh, but other than that, peace.